Hey everyone, in the news this week, Black Lives Matter activist Sasha Johnson was shot, although the gunman later claimed that they were actually aiming for the giant chip in her shoulder. There's an article in the paper about the food supply and the cost of meat asking, quote, when will insects be on our supermarket shelves? To which the answer is, 15 years ago when I lived in North London, that shop was disgusting. And in personal news, I've decided to boycott a number of companies that are selling items I can't afford. But of course the main news story this week was from the Dominic Cummings saga. He was giving testimony to the Commons Health and Social Care Committee on the subject of the government's handling of the COVID-19 pandemic. The event was a solid day's worth of evidence, consisting several hours of him venting and trying to settle old grudges. Cummings gave him his due blamed officials, including himself, for failing, quote, disastrously short of the standards that the public has a right to expect, which is kind of surprising in so much as most people expect appointed advisors to have no standards. It's a bit like the sign in a train station toilet asking you to find the places you'd expect to find it, which is surely implying that you should scrawl some graffiti in the cubicles and bust a lock off the door on your way out. It should be remembered that Dominic Cummings isn't actually an elected official or even a member of the Conservative Party. It's not as if he's going to lose a seat or be sacked. So in many respects, it was a bit like watching this week's other matchup, Brentford versus Swansea in the Championship playoff, where they're basically fighting for the right to be relegated out of the Premiership next year. So what of his answers? Yes or no? For instance, I recently asked a German friend if he knew the square root of 81, and he said no. Nine? No. So anyway, Dominic Cummings, what did he have to say? Well, for one, he said that Boris wasn't a, quote, fit and proper person. Health Secretary Matt Hancock should have been fired for lying. And he used the expression, quote, lions led by donkeys, a World War I analogy there, which is a bold move given that Boris is a keen historian. But then when asked about Boris, Johnson Cummings said that there were, quote, thousands of people better than him suited to run the country. The BBC and The Guardian were lapping that all up largely because they agreed that the UK should be run by an army of several thousand EU officials and bureaucrats. Cummings later contradicted himself, of course, saying, quote, you should have a dictator to run all of this. Maybe let's keep the EU out of it then. Uh, but then we're talking about several hours of exposition and showmanship in front of the cameras. Imagine it back in the day you went to see Ken Dodd, except instead of several encores worth of good jokes, it was just him vocalising his personal grievances for several hours. I'm sure one day it will all be spliced into a very good educational video explaining the difference between a sociopath and a psychopath. But in my mind, the real takeaway was that it was just chaos last year. Nobody had a clue what to do. Uh, you'd expect there to be a pre-written game plan, but no. We know, for instance, that if Argentina ever invaded the Falklands again, there's a game plan ready to put into action. And it was genuinely surprising and somewhat scary that the civil service had no plan whatsoever as to what to do in the event of a global pandemic. Covid could have happened when Harold Wilson was in power or David Cameron, but it just so happened to be Boris who was standing in that game of historical musical chairs when the music stopped. In hindsight, it's easy to blame Boris, but he didn't really have much to work with. What was he supposed to do? Personally invent a Covid vaccine or assemble a military alliance to launch an invasion of Wuhan? Hindsight is 2020, but it's 2021 now. Most of the press coverage, of course, has been given to Cummings' disdain for Carrie Simmons, Boris's girlfriend and now wife, it seems. I imagine if Dominic had lived several thousand years ago, he would have looked at the story of Samson and blamed it all on the girlfriend doing his hair. If anything, though, that line of question and answers has done Boris quite a favour, though, distracting the public from genuine scandals by dragging everything back to being about his personal life, which no one's really terribly surprised by and in which few people even care. Perhaps the real story here is the lack of an actual story. Anyway, see you next week. If you like these, click subscribe.